Hi, everyone. We're just going to allow a minute for folks to pile in here before we get started. Thank you so much for joining us. We are just going to wait for a few more folks to join us before we get started. Okay. I think we'll move, move on through. All right, um, thank you all again so much for joining us. My name is Amy Owen and I'm the executive director here at the Marin Museum of Contemporary Art in Novato. And we're just thrilled to have this opportunity to highlight our current exhibition, Invincible, guest curated by Luis Garcia, who will also be moderating tonight's conversation with three of our featured artists, Lark Calderon Gomez, Edgar Arturo Camacho, and Manuel Rulas. The exhibition is on view here through September 5th. So we hope you'll have a chance to check out the work um, in person. Before I turn things over to Luis, who will introduce the artists and provide an overview of the exhibition, I just wanted to thank all of our artists for so generously sharing their work with us and to give Luis a very talented artist in his own right, a proper introduction. Luis is an Oakland-based artist who holds a BFA in painting and sculpture from the California College of the Arts. His work has been presented at numerous institutions across the region, including the De Young Museum, Berkeley Art Center, Soma Arts, Mission Cultural Center, and Galleria de la Raza, among many others. Luis was also notably Marin Mocha's inaugural artist in residence, a program that is now in its fourth year. And lastly, just a couple of quick logistics. The framework for tonight's program will include brief presentations by each of our participants and a 10 minute roundtable discussion followed by an opportunity to take questions from all of you. So please feel free to use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen to post your questions as we uh, move through the program. So with that, um, thank you all again for joining us and I will um, let Luis take it away from here. Thank you again. Thank you, Amy. Um, I'd like to begin by saying thank you very much to the museum and all the wonderful staff for all the support that I've gotten and received in that way to put this uh, great exhibition together. Um, it's a very special exhibition. Uh, I also would like to take a moment just to uh, say and uh, recognize uh, what's going on right now in Haiti and Afghanistan and just to say that my heart goes out to them um, and uh, I hope for the best outcomes in that way. I also wanted to say a quick thank you to Nancy Rakoff, uh, who was the director at the time when I was asked to put together the exhibition. And so I wanted to kind of express my thanks to her as well. Um, I'm gonna begin uh, by kind of talking a little bit about the exhibition and some of the parameters, um, as well as some of the challenges that kind of uh, I had to see and kind of um, take on in some ways and trying to put something together. Uh, when this show was uh, kind of conceived, it was around uh, December, uh, November, and around that time, COVID uh, was very much um, at, in our minds in that sense as it is right now. And so it was really hard uh, to kind of think about um, the type of artists in uh, the reach I could have in that sense. And so I really had to pare it down to thinking about local artists in some ways. And so in thinking about that, I really wanted to kind of um, 
touch upon a few things in that sense that really touched me in the past of trying to create this show. And, um, and, and, and in some ways in doing that, um, you know, I kind of kind of had to think about uh, the space and uh, the amount of artists I could have in the show as well. Uh, so for me, in the beginning, I was trying to think about a, a few of those elements and um, and trying to put the show together, I constructed the artist uh, statement first. And so I'm going to read a little excerpt from the artist statement here, just to kind of give an idea or flavor of how the show came together and what it really kind of meant for me in some ways. And so for me, um, when putting the show together, I uh, put this artist statement in it. Uh, it's titled Estado Invencible, Unconquerable State. So unconquerable state means not capable of being subdued and brought under control as unconquerable passions or temper. I believe this is a way of living, a place that the spirit thrives in, a place of resilience, the drive to overcome the state that I believe that the artist of color resides in the state the Latin X community resides in. At a time of such divisions and uncertainty, it is important to express every voice, especially in underrepresented communities of color. This exhibition hopes to do that, to broaden perspectives, educate, to strengthen the unconquerable state of mind. And before I continue, I'd like to start off with this uh, quote from James Baldwin. Um, quote, as an artist, it is sort of an emotional, excuse me, I'm gonna start again. And, an artist is a sort of an emotional or spiritual historian. His role is to make you realize the doom and glory of knowing who you are and what you are. He has to tell because no one else can tell what it's like to be alive. So in, in regards to that statement, I'm gonna proceed forward and kind of talk a little bit about how I uh, chose the artist and how um, the idea came together in that way for me in thinking about putting together this exhibition. And so I really took a uh, look back in, at the artists that I knew and also exhibitions that I had had in the past and uh, the type of representation and uh, galleries and venues that were or are around in that sense uh, still in, in some ways that kind of, um, gave me an ability to kind of see that there was uh, not only artists of color out there producing wonderful work, but uh, that they were actually uh, very much growing in, in some ways through this community that these galleries kind of started. Uh, to me, El Camolito Collective, Galleria Beso Maya, Sanchez Contemporary are places that kind of hold uh, value to me in a way that um, they nurtured a lot of the different kind of ideas that I had in mind uh, with the artists that they were representing at the time. And so for me, it was very important to kind of um, extend their kind of um, sensibilities in some ways through this exhibition. And so for me, and thinking about that, I really wanted to kind of open it up uh, to have as many different types of voices as possible. Originally, the show was uh, going to have five artists, and I was able to bump it up to seven. So to me, that really broadened the perspectives and the scopes of the things that I really wanted to touch about in some ways of a, in, within, the, within the exhibition. And so the artists, for me, they bring a wide range of perspectives and representations from place and space. Uh, some artists reside part-time here in the United States and part-time in Mexico. Some artists were born here in the United States and some artists were born in other parts of Latin America or, um, you know, uh, so they bring a lot of different qualities in that way, not only in that aspect, but also uh, age range, gender and sexuality. So I was trying to um, touch upon a lot of different subjects in that way, but also trying to stratify uh, what it meant to be a part of this community. And so with that said, I'm gonna move forward. Um, into what I feel that this show kind of brings in. And so the artists to me in this show are really weaving in indigenous connections, qualities of reverence to spiritual worldview in, and that complement the Latinx uh, community, but it's a, such a complex culture and history within that community that I really wanted to focus mainly on the indigenous perspective of that community. Um, not so much in the Eurocentric aspects of it, but more of paying homage to a, um, 
a foundation that I feel that these artists carry as well as I do through my work and understanding that um, the seeds of who, how they wanna be represented are within those indigenous cultures. And so for me, it was very important to kind of uh, bring in those elements and try to kind of weave them in into it, the show. And I believe these artists really kind of um, bring in a lot of complexity through their work, um, but also just highlight a lot of those wonderful things that I just spoke about. So within the work, there are intersections that run through it, uh, such as post-colonial identity, representation, the proclamation of self, social political issues, a respect of indigenous cultures, traditions, values, and a veneration for nature. Uh, through the work itself, these artists really kind of are speaking uh, about personal things, but also about universal, universal qualities that we value uh, as a species, but also just as a um, people that, uh, you know, it, it coexist within um, our communities in that way. And so sometimes I feel that uh, those things are not put uh, as in the forefront as they should be. So for me, that was one thing that I really wanted to kind of bring out through the work in some ways. And these artists, I think, do an exemplary um, job in, in presenting their work this way. And so the work also combines a, man, a combination of manners and styles of creating storytelling that are varied from artist to artist. As you can see in these wonderful images here, uh, they include realism, surrealism, romanticism, portraiture, figurative, narrative, graffiti. Sometimes they combine a multiple of, of those uh, styles and manners within one piece. Sometimes it's only one thread that is running through one piece in that sense. But overall, there's an interconnectivity interconnect in that sense, as I had mentioned before, uh, that is based on um, the attitude of uh, wanting to connect to an indigenous kind of sensibility. And so for me, again, this is something I wanted to flesh out more than anything else. Uh, in that way, and I feel that the artist uh, kind of did that. Um, in fleshing it out though, I feel that they also brought in narratives that were really personal and, and contemporary in that way. And one of the artists in the show to me um, really kind of uh, brings in a lot of personal elements into their work, not to say that all the artists don't, but to me, this artist uh, in seeing their work is uh, very, powerful in the way he chooses to put himself and talk about things that matter to him. And so I'd like to introduce this artist and, and say thank you uh, for contributing to this exhibition, um, Edgar Arturo Camacho. And so for me, um, it is an honor to have him in this exhibition and I'd like to give him a moment to kind of talk a little bit about his work and his process. Thank you, Edgar. Uh, muchas gracias, Luis. Thank you so, so much um, for, for having me. My name is Edgar Arturo, the he pronouns, uh, indigenous Chicanx artist, and I am visiting y'all from Carcan Ohlone land in Vallejo, California. I think that's important to note. Um, and I wanted to just kind of share a little bit about my process um, as well as, um, um, you know, my, my work a little bit. Um, and I wanted to start with this piece because this piece is a little bit older. This is older work, as I'm um, sure may, some of you may notice in terms of like the technical skill. Um, but I think that this was an important piece for me, um, uh, or I was very happy that this piece was selected for the show because this piece actually represents a, a milestone in, in, in kind of like my growth. Um, and what I mean by that is that um, this piece and trigger warning, this, this piece is about mental health and suicide. Um, this, uh, this piece um, you know, was really the, the moment when I realized um, that I wanted to represent um, and this, or I wanted to, sh to shift the storytelling in my work a little bit. And the, the, what I mean by that is as folks of color um, who've experienced trauma, um, we are often expected almost to like regurgitate our trauma through our artwork. Um, and that's become very clear in terms of like what kind of art is collected and um, how uh, we have um, or how artists of color have impacted art history. Um, and so I wanted to change that a little bit. And this piece was one of those 
uh, was was kind of like what triggered that thought, you know, um, as someone who has a history of substance use and mental health and as a survivor of suicide, a suicide attempt, um, this was a suicide letter to for my partner. This was um, this piece is titled I will wait for you under the golden moon next to the Nopal. Um, and it, you know, it it uh, was was a letter to to my partner about where he can find me in his dreams when I was no longer in this physical world. And so it's really sad in, in that sense. Um, but as a figurative painter, um, you know, the vibrancy of the color um, using complementary colors is like really a thing in my work. It's something that, that I, I'm really drawn to um, and just oversaturating the colors as well. Um, so, you know, after um, I got the support that I needed from, from my partner and uh, I'm now clean and sober and thriving and super happy, um, you know, I decided like, what would it look like if I started to shape, shape to, to shift the narrative a little bit in my own work? Um, so that's what I decided to, to, to do. Um, next slide, please. And so my work um, moved from kind of like this um, place of pain and this place where it was trauma informed. And I started to really try and capture storytelling in a different way. Um, and so now I describe my work as very collaborative. Um, and what I mean by that is, is that because I'm working to center um, queer folks of color specifically, um, that these narratives don't belong to me. And so now my work is um, super collaborative in the way that I'm sitting down, really getting to know the folks that I'm painting and gathering these stories and making sure that these folks feel empowered. This is one of my friends. Um, her name is Miriam um, Mosqueda. Um, they are from um, the Usa tribe, uh, indigenous mujer, who's super strong. She wrote this poem called um, Sol. And there was a line in the poem or stanza in the poem that said, remember, not everyone can hold the sun in their arms without burning. And that line really stood out to me. And, you know, it was about reclaiming power. It was about reclaiming, um, you know, who she was um, or who she is. Uh, in her totality, in her brown skin. And I really wanted to kind of represent that. Um, and so I, I started to think to myself, like, what would it look like if I shifted the narrative um, and the storytelling um, just based on like some of the experiences that I had growing up as a queer brown kid, right? Like, what would it look like for me um, if I had seen queer folks of color um, thriving, happy, joyful, succeeding, um, but more importantly, like, what would that have been like for my parents? Uh, and what would that have been like for, for the healing journey that I'm on with my parents because of, you know, of, of you know, the religious component or the conservative component? Like, if my parents saw other queer folks of color thriving, how would that have shifted the, the, the narrative between us, right? So I started to really think about these things. Um, and this is kind of, you know, where, where my work um, really shifted. I decided to keep the vibrancy of the color and the oversaturation, um, but I really wanted to um, figure out like, how do I get consent to share these stories? Because these stories technically don't belong to me, even th though they may parallel my own. And so my work has now become very collaborative in the sense that I'm working with um, the folks that I'm painting. I'm learning about their families, learning about their history, learning about their past, their future, um, or what their, their aspirations for the future are, and really coming up with uh, compositions that reflect um, who they are. Um, and so, you know, this is uh, one of my my favorite pieces just because uh, it was the first piece that came out of this series in this body of work. Um, next slide, please. And so, you know, I also paint a lot of self portraits and, you know, folks always ask me like, why self portraits? Do you want to be the next Frida Kahlo? And, you know, my answer immediately is like, no, I don't want to be the next Frida Kahlo, although she's amazing. Um, but, you know, I think that, that the, the problem with that question is, is that because um, we have not been woven into art history, we know that um, historically institutions, galleries, museums uh, have historically not collected artists of color. And it's not until very recently that that's been starting to happen, not because these institutions are like, oh, I think it's time, but because artists of color have been demanding that it's now our time, that these spaces also belong to us and that we get to reclaim these spaces, right? So, you know, I think that because of, of this, you know, this history um, that whenever someone paints a self-portrait, it's always like, 
goes back to Frida Kahlo, right? When there are so many of us, and for me, painting self-portraits is more about healing that trauma, right? I get to spend as much time as I need on a self-portrait to really reframe some of the attacks that have been made on my body, made on me, made on my existence. Um, not only as an indigenous queer person, because I live in a country that has literally historically taken action against my existence, but also you know, against the patriarchy within my own family and communities. And I get to spend that time and say, you are beautiful, your skin is beautiful, your gender is beautiful, and reframe some of those things, those negative stereotypes, those negative attacks that have been made on me, right? And really get to tell myself that you are not, um, you know, that, that you are more than your pain and your trauma, and like, look at you now, right? Um, thriving and surviving and, um, and healing. Um, and so this piece is really that juxtaposition to that first piece and that contrast between, you know, the, the work that came from some of the pain. And there's definitely room for that because those stories are real. Um, but also, you know, that um, the other end is, is that queer folks of color, we experience a wide range of emotions, no matter where we come from, right? And that our joy is worthy of celebrating and that we are worthy of collecting and that we are worthy of being in spaces like Marin Mocha um, or any institution for that matter, right? Like, and that we belong. And so that's kind of where this piece um, um, is from. So, or, or what the inspiration for this piece is because, like the plants and my connection to the earth, uh, I am rooted and I am strong and I am resilient. Um, and so, yes, thank you so much um, for having me. And I would like to pass that on back to Luis so we can hear a little bit about another artist. Thank you. Thank you, Edgar, uh, for contributing such powerful work and such personal work as well. Um, it's an honor to have you and your work um, in this exhibition and, you know, just an honor to know someone like you who's such a great advocate in many, many ways. So thank you again for uh, your, your uh, work and also just, you know, the very powerful words in that sense. Um, and now I'm gonna move on and introduce uh, the next artist here, uh, another wonderful artist that brings in, uh, again, wonderful elements uh, that are interconnected within uh, the indigenous culture, Mesoamerican culture. And he really uh, does a wonderful, wonderful job in um, not only connecting it, but also bringing it to a contemporary sensibility. So with that said, I'm gonna let Manuel kind of speak a little bit about his process and his work. Manuel Relas. Uh, hola a todos. <laughs> Muchas gracias, Luis. Luis. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm really happy to, to stay here with, with everyone, con todos. Um, the, the, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not really, <laughs> I'm a little ner nervous. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm an artist, like uh, I'm working a lot with the, the print, print maker. I'm, I'm a printmaker and, and painter, but uh, in the beginning, I'm start with the, the the graffiti, and after that, I have the the the, the curiosity about the, the the art, and and then one point I connect with the roots, and especially uh, living in Mexico, it's everywhere, and when I find I found the the the, the books about the, the, the history, the uh, the the, the pre-Hispanic and the Meso Mesoameric art Mesoamericano. Uh, they uh, they impact me a lot, and I start to to take this for 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 half a new meanings about that. So uh, for me, uh, it's the art is a, it's 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 a process like uh, I had that is for healing. It's it's a process about the thinking about who 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 we are, and especially change the idea about the, the all and the history, all the good things coming to the, 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 the Occidente, no? like from Europe or from, from here, from the United States, in the, in the, in the, in the whiteness, no? because it's, it's important uh, respect the knowledge about the, 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 the culture that they have, Many many times, uh, 
with the, this kind of knowledge about the mathematics, astrology, medicine, and, and the arts. And for me, I take this, this, this uh, codex and I, 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 I make a, a new interpretation about that. For example, in this piece, this is Florecer Blonde. It's about after, after the darkness, after the, the hard times, always, always, always the, 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 sin, the sins, the semillas. The seeds. The seeds, thank you. <laughs> uh, always van a crecer. <laughs> Sorry for my English, my second language. Uh, and this idea about the, 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 the maybe the dead, no, the, the real dead, but sometimes um, kind of dead about the, 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 the history or the real history, no? Like, like uh, in one point about the, the, the society or the, the same society in, 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 in the, the Latino cultura, no? the, 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 the machismo that's, that's, that's really strong about the, the thing about the patria, but why patria? Por que no? Why say matria? Because I think is the, 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 the land is a mother, you know, it's a, it's a mother. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and at the same time, I think about in, in one phrase, the one artist from, from she born in, in Costa Rica, but she, she say like, uh, los mexicanos nacemos donde queremos. Eh, she say about the, si los volcanes están despertando, mm -hmm. ¿por qué los latinos no? No sé cómo se puede traducir eso. Sí, sí. He's saying that if volcanoes can uh, wake, wake up, why can't the Latin community? Totally. Um, for me, the, the idea de every day, living, maybe tomorrow, who knows? But at the same time, is this celebration about that? But at the same time, in some time, is the day per day is really hard. It's really hard for for many 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 people from for 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 Latinos working working on um, especially for queer people or, or women, especially in Mexico, is the, the 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 homicide for for them. It's 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 really really high. And um, for me, the idea the, to be grateful about the life and, and thinking about the every day is a fight, a fight for the life, but at the same time fight for the system. No, the, the system are really in the way to, to, for, to be more easy for kind of people and for the other exclude, exclude, exclude yes, totally. And um, is the reason this piece is about the florescer, no? Poco after after the darkness, the the, the seeds every all the time, va a crecer como el maíz. So after the darkness, uh, seeds grow from um, like the corn does. They grow out of the ground, and so uh, I think you know, for me, this piece is uh, very much in, in in line with that. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And the reference is the, the god Tlaloc is the, the god for the, the, the raining, is, is the, 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 the image next to the, the, the paint. Um, thank you. If you can share it there, the, thank you so much, Luis. And the other is, is resistiendo. This, this, this piece is, is the same. I take the, the influence, the, the, the godness. In this case, is one godness from the Aztec. Culture is the name is Tlazolteoc. And for me, I, it was in the, the pandemic when I, 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 I was working and literally in a lot of things because after COVID, it was really hard for me and for a lot of people. No money, no house, no any. But I think about the, the, the culture, about the, the half in this land more the, of one, uh, 100 year um, thinking about the, the first war or the biolo biological weapons weapons was when the conquistor come here in America, not in, the, in this country and in all the continent, 
the, and they start to kill with the, all the bacteria, uh, sickness, and after that, when the, 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 the countries have the, the, the names uh, for the society, these people still resisting about uh, uh, respetando, conservando mm -hmm. uh, uh, su propia lengua, sus propias culturas. So the indigenous culture, even though it was bombarded with, in the beginning, you know, bombarded with, uh, uh, when, when uh, you know, the whole, uh, the whole sensibility of the uh, annihilation of the culture began in that way through uh, disease and other things that were brought over, uh, the culture was still able to resist and grow and continue and maintain their language, their ways of being and respect for um, uh, nature as well. Yeah, thank you. Gracias, Edgar. It's about this piece, uh, about this, it's a tribute about the, the, the all the people in, in all this continent uh, fighting every day for have a, a, a better life for, for them and for families and still, still, still to be strong and I think this opportunity to share that in, in the Marine Mocha is it's, 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 it's a, a, good, a good thing about the whole community, uh, especially in this time after this last year about think about the, the, this, this idea about the all migrants come here to, they are delinquents, blah, blah, blah. And, and at the same time, the only we want, it's a better food and future for all or, or, or for nuestra familia. You want a better future for your family. And I'm really happy to, to, to be part of this amazing exhibition. Thank you so much, Edgar, and thank you so much uh, Luis, Edgar, Lark, Pablo, and Ramona, um, and the, yeah, especially the, the Marine, the Marine, the Moca Marine for, for have this opportunity to, for, for, uh, for us, uh, for nosotros. Mm -hmm. And I hope um, in the future, the, 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 the Latino community have more, 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 more space because it's, it's really fundamental in the history in this country, um, in this continent. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, Manuel. Beautiful work and very powerful. And you know, you weave in so many different kind of uh, ideas into it. And again, uh, you're kind of bringing in uh, historically beautiful work that's connected to a culture that's been around for 30,000 years, but contemporizing it to make it uh, connect to where we're at now. So I really value you and I really value your work. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna move forward now with our next artist, uh, La Calderon Gomez, and uh, their work is uh, magic to me. It's just so beautiful and radiant and uh, just contains a lot of wonderful, meaningful, symbolic kind of qualities. Um, I'm going to let them kind of go into more of that. And so with any further ado, Lark Calderon Gomez. Thank you. Hi. Um, yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, okay, so I wanted to start with the painting Ishel, um, Goddess of Healing. Um, she's a Mayan goddess, and I paint her all the time because I love her. Um, she's actually a goddess of many things, a goddess of love and a goddess of um, the moon, a goddess of midwifery. She's, she's a million things. And, um, and that's why I, I love to paint her, but she's also a Mayan goddess. And um, she's a Mayan goddess. I think um, that's why I feel so deeply, such deep feelings for her um, because my father is from Guatemala. Um, so I wanted to touch for a moment on my father. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so he immigrated to this country um, when he was 15, and um, he had to face some um, some racism in in LA when he in the late 50s when he got here, and um, and he met my mom about maybe about five years later, and they got married and had three children. I'm the youngest of the three. And um, I also have a half sister from his second marriage, uh, 16 years younger than me. Um, anyway, I just wanted to touch on my father for a second because he is probably um, the best way to um, describe him. I think the most accurate way would be, um, is probably familiar to you already because you're probably familiar with the um, Dos Equis commercials the most, um, what is it, the most interesting, interesting man in the world. <laughs> yes, um, I mean, that's, it sounds cliche, but it, it's, it's true. He's a world traveler. He's, he's um, Armani wearing the best bourbon sipping um, world traveler and lover of life. And um, I just wanted to, um, to like show him for a second just to he's just an overall badass i think okay so um can you go to the next slide please yes okay so back to Ishel. okay oh i want to talk to, about my mom for a second too um my mom is um she was born in the midwest she's american and she um has like english and cherokee indian descent and um and Okay, so she taught me to paint at seven years old. I was a little tomboy running around and watching her paint. Um, she was taking an oil painting class and I was obsessed with <laughs> watching her um, paint the still life. She's just this beautiful painter. And um, I just was a chatterbox all over her asking her every question you can, you can think of. And she finally, needed to get some work done. So she set me up an easel next to hers and um, and started teaching me to paint. And um, after I got past that first initial um, fascination, I kept going back to art and drawing when, um, when I was troubled or um, I was feeling down, you know, I would always turn to painting and drawing and um, it helped me um, therapeutically. And I think I do that today as well, uh, more than ever. Um, okay, this next slide. Yeah, the next slide. That's great. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I should talk about this a little bit. Okay, so this has gold leaf on the headdress and some collage I wanted to get into. The gold leaf is 18 karat gold, and it's made of from the uh, Mayan um, calendar. And um, I love the, the motifs and the hieroglyphics, and I just love getting lost in the, in the details. And the centerpiece is the, is the motif of Ishal, um, the goddess. And that's a very common, very um, traditional uh, motif. Um, okay, you can go to the next slide if you don't mind. Thank you. Okay, and I have my next favorite thing about painting recently is is um, collage actually I, I love this element um, now I um, started implementing vintage newspapers with um, contemporary headlines of things that have moved me and um, so if you can go to the next slide please. Okay, so the skirt is made up into three different sections. And the first section here is um, those we've lost is, is kind of a tribute to the Black Lives Matter movement, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and the many people who have lost their lives to um, police um, violence. Um, okay, and then the center part is, is more of like a tribute to the social, um, just justice movement and it's not just all african americans it's it includes indigenous and latinx and um asian americans jewish americans um muslim americans and every every shade of brown and um 
I feel like we're, we are in a movement right now. If you can go to the next slide, that'd be great. Okay, and okay, so this last slide is showing, for me, it's really hopeful. Um, Chauvin was the murderer of George Floyd and he was found guilty, which was monumental. And um, it felt like a turning point for race in this country. It left me with hope. And um, it felt like we are on a um, moment of change um, and I'm very grateful. So I wanted to kind of hold on to that moment for a second. So that's why I put it in here. Okay, the next slide, please. Okay, so um, I, I guess I made this painting. It's, it's called Ishel, Goddess of Healing. And it's, for me, I needed healing after the last four years, and especially after the last year and a half. I won't get political anymore, but it was brutal and I needed some healing. And I painted this for not just myself, but I hope that she is healing to others as well. And, um, and I guess that's it. Thank you so much, Luis and Marin Mocha and everybody who came today. Thank you, Lark. Thank you. It's very beautiful, powerful piece. And, you know, hearing uh, your words and hearing how you put it together and also the interconnection that you have with uh, becoming an artist, but also some of the um, yeah. wellspring of ideas that come, I guess, because of your father's history and also just other things that uh, have affected you in that way. You know, it's a, it's a really uh, wonderful tapestry that you put together in that way. And it comes through in this wonderful, amazing painting that just glows. And I'm so honored to have, you know, when I first saw this piece, I immediately knew that it had to be in the show. And thank you again for trusting me and allowing oh, thank me to show you so it. much for including me in the show. I feel really honored. And thanks for Marin Mocha as well. So I'm gonna be moving into the open discussion panel and I would like to invite all the artists to come in and be a participant in this part here. And so this part here for me is more about just having an open discussion and just kind of talking with each other. Uh, we've kind of gotten a chance to learn a little bit about the process, a little bit about who we are, why we make these pieces and what they represent for us. Um, You've also gotten to hear a little bit about my background <clears throat> in the sense of who I am, but also in creating the exhibition and what it means for me and what I was trying to achieve. So in, with that said, I'm gonna open it up in some ways to kind of just have a free flow discussion in that way. And um, if you don't mind, I'd like to kind of begin the ball rolling to uh, just start it off with Lark in some ways um, and kind of continue with your piece and talk a little bit about the extension of the frame and also just uh, the qualities that you know you bring into that work. Oh, okay. And what, uh, kind of, and what the frame represents to you in some ways. Okay, so the frame, um, because I paint super fine, I paint in real thin layers and um, I love it. I love to paint that way. I've painted just blending and I really, but I paint real thin and people think it's almost airbrushed sometimes, often. and. Um, because I sand it down also. And I, so I started adding like collage to give it texture. And then I started, um, I kind of stumbled upon it, vintage fr um, wood for framing. And I, I, at the same time, well, probably 10 years later, I ran into a guy who locally, who, who goes out and um, deconstructs barns that are old to save the wood. And he gave me a call when he found this wood for this frame. And it's the story of this wood is, it is broken down from the first barn in Marin, in West Marin. And um, it's from, the barn was built in 1890. So I am assuming that that wood is probably, that tree was probably 500 years old. It's a local redwood and it's probably lived through seeing hundreds of years of happy Miwok local Indians um, living and passing by. And, and then the Spanish colonial times, 
um, you know, it's just, I, I love that history and I, and just, it's so lightweight and easy to handle. I just love it. Um, so then it also has some, he collects some vintage pieces of metal and I, I added it to, the, I get, get a few of those too. And I put it on the frame over the holes. And, um, so that's the story about the frame, but I, I like that roughness with my fine painting. I feel like it kind of is, um, it balances out because otherwise my painting just looks too flat, you know, and, and plus I just love all that stuff. So, and I built them myself, these frames. I love to get <laughs> right on. Good for you. I squeeze them into my little Good car. For Good for you. No, I love to hear that. I don't know that. if they're going to hold up, but I love to do it. <laughs> love it, you know, and just the history of the wood, just everything kind of complements each other in that way. So thank you very much for, um, you know, illuminating us in that sense. And, uh, you know, if any of the other, other artists in that sense have a question for Lark or in general, you know, please feel free to jump in. I don't want to take up all the space in that sense. So if there's anything people want to touch upon in that way too, you know, but I also, you know, have other things that I would like to talk about, you know, so um, if anybody else wants to kind of jump in at this point, I, I would leave the floor to them, but otherwise I'll just continue asking a few questions that I kind of wanted to talk about in that sense. So for me, you know, in looking at the work, uh, Edgar, in that sense, um, one of the things that I, I, I heard um, through this talk, but also in just hearing uh, other talks that you've done in that sense, and, you know, it's very powerful to hear you say how different you thought that uh, it may have been having work that touched upon some of the subject matter that you do in that sense. And so for me, I'd like to know, when do you think you saw something in that way that touched you in a manner that made you kind of have an aha moment or was there an aha moment for you? Yeah, thank you so much for, for this question. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I remember the first time that I stood in front of like a Hindi Wiley piece and was like, wow, you know, um, yes. this is just right up my alley. Yes. You know, super saturated colors, really beautiful, vibrant, um, again, painting queer folks of color. And I just thought to myself, like, I want to be able to do that someday. Um, and not only like, was it powerful to, to see just the mastery level of work, but also, you know, to stand in front of someone who holds so much power. Um, and because a lot of his portraits are front facing and they are directly, you know, um, looking at the viewer, um, you know, again, there's like so much power in um, having a queer person of color stand in their power. And if that makes anyone uncomfortable, the person that needs to walk away is the viewer um, because the painting isn't going anywhere, the person isn't going anywhere. And so for me, like that was an aha moment because not only did I want to paint like a Hindi, I wanted to be the person in the painting because they held so much power. And mm -hmm. So that was kind of like an aha moment for me. And then I wanted, and then I started to go through some of the history books and art history. And I'm like, where are other queer painters of color who are painting queer folks of color? And it was hard, it was hard to find folks. Um, and so that's, that was one of the reasons why I decided this is something that I want to do. Um, so thank you for that question. Thank you. No, that's that's beautiful. And Kahindi Wiley, yeah. I mean, that to me is just, you know, he's a gift in so many ways. And, uh, you know, bravo in that sense. And, uh, you know, that to me is is kind of what art does. It um, triggers moments, you know, in that sense uh, that really kind of are so deep and uh, leave marks within us in that way. And I, I, I'm so grateful for the artists that are in this exhibition because that's how I feel about their art in some ways. They express stories to me that um, when I see them, not only do I see what they're doing, but I also feel it in that sense, you know? So to me, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really unique gift to have um, artists that kind of have that power, you know? Um, there are a lot of storytellers. Uh, there are a lot of stories in that sense, but to me, uh, uh, I, I, I feel like there's uh, far and few artists that really resonate to me at a deeper level in that way. And so I really appreciate all the work that's in this show. Um, I'd like to ask actually um, Manuel, being a resident from two different cultures and experiencing two different cultures, um, 
how do you weave in como cuando su, tú estás construyendo tus uh, tus cuadros verdad qué estás pensando y en, en, en las tradiciones pero también en las culturas en, en el momento que estás viviendo ahorita verdad porque hay momentos que vives en, en México y hay momentos que vives aquí en los Estados Unidos so what I'm asking him is how does he kind of figure out for himself uh, these moments and try to kind of bring it into his work when you're kind of uh, working back and forth within two cultures in some ways. Yeah, uh, gracias, thank you, Luis. Um, for me, uh, all the time, the topic is about the, the dead, the dead, the, well, yeah, when, El cuerpo muere, when the body is dead, but also every kind, a uh, little dead for every day, no? And I think about the, 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 the fight for every day, no? Maybe fight for running to the world or fight for pay your rent or fight for against mm -hmm. the the, the tiny the tiny fights but in the rest on in the end of the day these are fights 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 and and I think about the dead no the dead the dead it's the topic around for me for me and, and for my my work but the dead for me no is the when we go directly to the hole to the ground I think is the the other beginning and also for me, this idea is like uh, the motor for, for, for working, for painting, for, for find the, yeah, for find the, the, the platform for express that, no? Uh, maybe I use a lot the, 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 the element, element prehispanic, but also the, the pop culture, or the the different culture and sometimes especially in, in 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 my work in the like a printmaker is more like a collage collection of uh, uh, ideas and image sometimes anti 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 establishment anti consumerism anti capitalism um, um, because for me is the chalk about the 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 the, the 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 culture in Mexico and here, no, here is more focus on other goals. In Mexico, your goal is survive, survive, <laughs> because you don't have choice, no. We say it's no hay de otra más que cambiar. It's say like a, it's no other, other way like a working means and every 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 kind. Um, and, and for me now is, yeah, also art, but also I have, after COVID, I need to find the other work to pay my, my bills on my rent. And um, this topic is up around for my art, not the dead, the dead and the next day. And always when I'm going to the bed, I'm really grateful about I have other day and I really grateful about have house, food, and people love me. And it's it's kind of think about that and they are my art is the, the way to, to say thank you to the life and thank you the all the culture and all the people around for me. Um, one of the questions that I did see that came up by Julia um, that maybe we can all kind of address is what advice we would give to like young artists or young young people. Um, um, I don't know if anyone wants to start or I'm happy to start. Um, you know, one thing for me, because I, I work with young people in terms of like the arts. And so for me, like I always think about like, and this question comes up for me a lot is like, you know, I, I 
want to inspire folks to share their stories, right? Because no one knows your story better than you know your story. No one can tell your story better than you can tell your story because it's your story, right? So I think the advice that I would give to young people, um, Julia and young artists is um, to take risks and to share their stories and to be brave and to hold um, space for themselves and to honor their history and their stories um, and to, to share that, you know, Art is one way to storytell. It's just another tool in our toolbox that we can continue to share stories. Um, and so hopefully um, folks or young people are inspired to share their stories um, via, via storytelling. Thank you guys. Uh, sorry, technical difficulties on my end there and uh, I'm back though, but thank you very much. Uh, so, I think at this point in time, uh, I'm not sure if Amy has opened it up to the panel discussion or the discussion of the Q&A in that way, unless we want to continue. I, I did have one question in general in that sense about, um, you know, as I was saying before, uh, kind of um, for me, the exploration of art has been about figuring out um, my own uh, place in that sense. And it seems like there's a lot of that within the artwork that, um, you know, I've seen and also admire in that way that's in the show. And so I'd like to know from each of you in some ways, um, and I've heard a little bit in that way, uh, was there a moment in that sense um, when you thought I want to um, become an artist that mainly focuses on stories that are about me in that sense? And you may have just touched upon that, Edgar, and I'm very sorry that I missed that, that whole um, segment there, but you know, for me, that was something that I really wanted to hear about just that moment for each of you, kind of like where exactly that you feel that you found a connection in that sense for yourselves as an artist and the stories you wanted to tell. Should I jump in? Go for it, Lark. <laughs> okay. Um, I probably was in my early 40s when I finally started to feel like I knew what I wanted to paint. Um, and it was, you know, I'm 55 now. So it's been a while, it's, you know, it's, it took me a while to get there. Um, I, I did experiment with painting myself when I was young, but I, I do not prefer to use myself as a subject. I, I like to look to others who inspire me um, to paint now. Um, and my first most influential person was uh, my grandmother, my, Guatem my maternal grandmother from Guatemala. And she's the first, she was in an abusive relationship um, and she, way back in the 30s, when you are not supposed to leave or divorce um, a woman, had no power at all, but she, um, she left her marriage and came to the United States for a better life, you know, as they say. And, um, and I find her strength just so motivating, and it took me years I, I painted her for probably good five years and just since um my I guess at 40 was when she passed away and that's when I finally really started hitting up my dad about tell me tell me about her I want to know more you know and unfortunately it was after she was gone but um it was the motivator for me and that's when he really opened up with the my Latin history because it was kind of painful for him and he didn't like to open up about it. So my life with my father up until I was five, that's, he lived with us until I was five and then he, he left. But um, he, um, he had a real painful childhood because she left when he was five and didn't come back till for 10 years. So he had, he didn't like to think about those times and um, he was always looking for her and it broke his heart, you know, and so I understand, but I just wish I knew my Latin side, you know? So since I was 40, I started to really search for um, my side, that side of my family. And uh, my grandmother was my, my first muse, I guess. And um, I started to invent stories, what I, <laughs> what I thought her immigration might have been like, you know, her migrating north, you know, cause it took her four years and then, um, so I, I used to write these stories because I didn't I didn't know 
the details because he didn't really know either. And um, anyway, yeah, my grandma was my first influence and she started me off with the painting of strong women. And I just love that. That That is something I will always paint. That's my, I love painting strong women. Beautiful. Well, you definitely do a great job. You know, it's, uh, it's very uh, evident in that way, how you feel and um, how you carry, you know, how, those, those elements within your work. Thank you. Edgar? Yeah, I mean, I think that for me, um, you know, I don't always know what I what I want to paint or the stories that I want to tell. And I think that it's very kind of like in the in the the moment and where I am in life. Um, and, you know, like right now, you know, I um, I really am really wanting to explore like what does it look like to explore folks of color and their joy, right? Because uh, like Manuel had touched on, you know, um, in, in some of his work is, is that um, we are fed these negative stereotypes about whether it's the Latinx community or folks of color in general about, um, you know, anti-immigrant sentiment, um, anti-blackness, um, transphobia, homophobia, like, um, um, I really want to share stories and create stories that act as that counter narrative to all of these things that are fed to us by law enforcement, by the media, um, by political systems. Um, and so in a country, again, that has taken uh, action against the existence of folks of color, existing and thriving and being joyful in itself is revolutionary. And I think that this is kind of where um, I'm sitting now in terms of like the, the body of work. Um, and, you know, in terms of like, like, will I continue to use myself as a subject in paintings? Hmm. Probably for the rest of my life, you know. <laughs> I, um, and, and, and I don't do, you know, self-portraits exclusively, but I also, like, think about, like, all of the pain and all of the trauma that I've endured, um, and I think about, like, how do I reframe this? Mm -hmm. How do I spend the 40 hours on a piece or the 20 hours on a piece or the two minutes on a piece sometimes, right? Because I just say, this is not working. Um, but, like, to really, like, like reframe um, what has literally killed, you know, indigenous people, brown folks, black folks, folks of color, um, you know, again, like it seems, um, you know, folks of color, indigenous communities, um, queer folks are, have higher incidences of suicide rates, of substance use, of mental health. Um, so like these things are, are real, these are real issues, right? And um, that sometimes we don't talk about. Um, and so for me, it's like part of my healing journey and whether I, you know, it's a way for me to repackage my story and be like, this is how I choose to share my story. I am reclaiming it. You don't get to tell me what you know, you don't get to to attack me anymore. This is who I am. This is how I present it to you. And if you're uncomfortable with it, then you get to walk away from it. Um, and for me, I think that that's going to be a lifetime of a, a lifetime's healing journey, you know? Um, but not only that, I will also accompany it by painting and centering the stories of other queer folks and folks of color. Beautiful. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's a very interesting uh, juxtaposition in, in, in a way of kind of creating work that it seems that is very personal in that way. And, um, you know, I also, I also appreciate the kind of different uh, spaces that you've tried to kind of touch upon in that way, but also just the fact that you have moved from, you know, realizing that the work itself needs to grow just like you are in that sense you know and so it's a it's a constant evolution of bring, bringing the process with yourself but also bringing the work you know and and then looking at your work you know I, I think the first time i saw your work was at sanchez contemporary and it was a piece with a butterfly and um i'll come in i'll come and um, visit you in your dreams i think and you know it's a, a person holding a butterfly but it's a skeleton in that sense and it's really a beautiful piece you know, and so to me, it's just kind of an evolution that I've seen with your work in that way, but also just the personalization. And I really appreciate the whole aspect of you talking about, um, you know, asking for permission from individuals in that way and really learning from them in that sense. You know, for me, it's, it's a really 
refreshing thing to hear in that sense, because um, sometimes I, I, including myself, I take those things not so much for granted, but I just also don't think about it in such a scale in that way. And so when I hear something like that, it resonates and it makes me kind of put like a little um, mark there for myself to kind of come back and think about it for myself a little deeper and find out what that really means for myself too and my work, you know? So to me, those are kind of moments that I really appreciate hearing other artists and their process in that way, because sometimes it illuminates things for me that I kind of are, they're staring me in the face, but I kind of just don't see sometimes. And it's good to hear other ways of processing, um, you know, your, your way of creating in that sense. And so at this point, I think we're gonna open it up to just the questions we might've had from the, the community in that way. So we could have a little time for, to answer them. I know, I think Edgar, you, you kind of touched upon one of the questions that Julia posed for you in that sense. And I think there was a question for you, Lark, in that way. Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I'm having an issue kind of getting to them, but I do recall seeing something in the sense of, um, you know, choosing women and uh, how important they are for you and how you represent women in, in your work in that sense. And is that something that, uh, that you have been kind of thinking about and how is it that um, you made that choice for yourself in that way? It wasn't um, like a conscience, conscious choice. It was everything for me with um, subject is like my, like um, I kind of like am drawn to like certain things and I go with that feeling. And I've, I've been um, since, you know, my grandmother was my muse, I, I um, and I've embraced the strong woman um, archetype, you know, I, I, I love it so much that I cannot um, let it go, you know, I'm not done with it, so I just keep going with it. Um, and it, so it started with her basically um, 15 years ago, maybe. And um, and I can't remember all the different people I've painted, but you know, um, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez and Amanda Gorman, you know, are among them, you know. And I I, I love strong, powerful women, and I embrace them and celebrate them at every chance I can I can do it and um, those are beautiful portraits too very you. beautiful you know thank very, you. Yeah. very powerful and beautiful and you know that's one thing um, the consistency in your work and your sense of vision in that way it's you know again kind of like Edgar I've seen your work kind of evolving but also having a, a, a foundation and a platform that's kind of grown from, you know, and to me, that's uh, very exciting. This piece to me is kind of like, um, Excel piece to me is kind of like a piece that, uh, in my point of view, you know, is uh, you brought it to a different level. You know, it's it, it reached a level that I think, um, you know, it just, it brings all those elements that I had seen in your work, but just has, has uh, you, you really kind of, um, pushed yourself in a lot of different ways, I think. And in just talking to you and how you were creating it, you know, I remember in, in talking to you and you were still working on it and how many times you stripped the varnish and put it back on, you know, and just hearing your process in that sense, you know, and your dedication. And so the payoff is that now you have this amazing piece, you know? And so for me, it was really beautiful just to hear you talk about uh, your experiences right now and how it's evolved and where they come from, but also just in seeing it myself, you know, and just seeing the evolution of the work, but also just hearing some of the struggles in that sense and, uh, you know, how we kind of cope with them. Um, is, is there any other questions at this point um, that uh, the audience has? I'm, I'm, so, I'm very sorry. I, I, I have to apologize for the technical difficulties I had there. And it seems like I lost the questions that were coming in. So if people can uh, repost them, I would love to hear them. No other questions at this time. Okay. So I think, you know, unless there's anything else that, that you guys would like to touch upon in that way, I could just bring it back and kind of wrap it up in that sense. And, um, you know, thank you very much for your time. 
And again, I'd like to apologize to you, the museum and everyone else viewing for the technical difficulties that came in that way. But as you know, we live in uh, this brave new world of Zoom and this is kind of what we're trying to do. And uh, thank you for your patience. I really appreciate everybody uh, coming and participating, but also listening to these wonderful stories. And uh, please take advantage if you haven't to go see the exhibition. It'll be there for two more weeks. Um, you know, so for me, it's, it'd be great just to have um, as many people come and see it, as many people take in the work. And also just because, um, you know, it's, it's such a special uh, exhibition on so many levels due to the fact of the issues that I talked about before, but also just the fact of bringing uh, such high quality work, such amazing artists and such rare, unique stories that you typically don't see showcased in museums in this manner. Uh, that I think it would be worth your while to come and check it out. So please, um, if you can check it out, let me know your thoughts. And again, thank you very much to Marin Mocha. Thank you to the artist. I hope everybody has a wonderful evening and um, I pray and hope for, every, for the best for the world in that sense too. So thank you. Thank you so much, Luis and Marin Mocha thank and you. everybody who came. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Muchas gracias, amigos. <laughs> gracias, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys. And so you guys have a wonderful evening. Salud. 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 <laughs>